two common words you'll hear when talking about DevOps skills are monitoring and observability. But aren't they really just the same thing except one word sounds cooler? Well, no, not really. And in this video, I'm gonna explain each, highlighting the differences between the two and why that's important. Let's start with monitoring. It's probably more familiar to you, so it makes sense to talk about it first. In the DevOps, sysadmin, and infrastructure world, monitoring refers to the actual performance metrics of the infrastructure. This means metrics like the CPU utilization, CPU load, memory utilization, disk space, network throughput, just to name a few. These are important metrics for understanding the health of your infrastructure, and they can be useful for troubleshooting and capacity planning. Using these metrics, you can make decisions like, do I have enough capacity to handle an increase in traffic? Or am I paying for servers that are just sitting idle? Where monitoring falls short though, is understanding what the experience is like for your customers. For example, a high CPU utilization doesn't really tell you about whether your customers are able to use your app, only that the servers are working really hard. That's where we start to get into observability. Observability is like monitoring, but with the goal of answering different questions. Observability should tell you whether or not your customers are able to successfully use your app or service, and if not, provide you with the tools to understand why. Let's take a look at a live example and you'll get a better idea of what I mean. We're looking at some sample data using honeycomb.io and I'll link to this data down in the description below so you can try it out for yourself. Let's look at the number of requests and we can group them by status, meaning the HTTP status code. We can see that a majority of our response codes are HTTP 200, which is great. That means everything was successful. There are a few error responses as well, some 404s and 503s that may need investigating. I can filter to those events and even look at the raw data as well to start getting a better idea of what might be happening. I can also take a look at things like the time elapsed, which can be really helpful in understanding how quickly our service is responding. After all, there are two parts to a successful user experience. Number one, it has to work, and number two, it has to work in a timely manner. If either of those fails, our users will be frustrated, unsatisfied, and if it's not corrected, on their way to using our competitor service. So we can go deeper into this, but I think that's enough info to get my point across. Monitoring and observability are two different things for answering two different questions, and you need both. You'll wanna make sure that you're addressing both when building solutions for the software engineers you support. You can learn how observability and monitoring tie into the other aspects of DevOps by downloading my free DevOps roadmap it's a choose your own adventure guide for creating your own DevOps learning path. And there's a link to it in the description below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.